Okay, so uh, this UPS is plugged in and turned on. Uh, this uh, DC to DC converter is actually connected to the battery. I'm um, just using it to be able to see the voltage of the battery. Uh, I want to be able to see the voltage range uh, that the battery gets exposed to and the hopes of being able to uh, use lithium ion batteries to, instead of uh, lead acid. So let's, uh, currently there's a light bulb connected to the battery plugs and I will un now unplug the UPS and let's see what happens to the voltage of the battery. So as you can see, the voltage here is quickly dropping and let's see how, uh, how low it gets. Okay, so the UPS has turned off and now we will plug it back in and let's see how high the voltage will get on the chart. Now I have an APC Back UPS Pro 1300 connected. Uh, this one runs off of two lead acid batteries in series for 24 volt nominal. Uh, the batteries are external. I've connected them externally in order to be able to tap the, uh, the voltage. So as you can see right now, the f or you can actually hear the fan is running, um, most likely because it is recharging the battery is uh, slightly but now I'll go ahead and unplug the UPS from the wall and see what's the lowest voltage we will see on the batteries. This time to plug the UPS back into the mains and see how high the voltage gets on a recharge. So this is a third UPS. I'd like to test the maximum and minimum voltage. And so this one runs with three 12 volt lead acid batteries. So let's turn it on, and right now it's just running off the batteries. And that will let us determine the minimum voltage. All right, so now that we have the maximum and minimum voltages for three different types of UPSs, we need to figure out how many lithium ion batteries to put in series in order to match these voltages. So if you look at a typical lithium ion battery like this one, this one is made by LG, we need to look up the spec sheets to see what's the maximum charge voltage and what the minimum discharge voltage. So looking on the web, I was able to find this spec sheet, which is from LG, and you can see the nominal voltage is 3.6 volts and the maximum charge voltage is 4.2 volts and the end voltage cut off for a discharge is 2.75. So we have to remain within these parameters when charging and discharging these 18650 cells. Note that uh, Samsung for these batteries here, these uh, ICR 18650-28A they actually have a different maximum charge voltage. So you can see here, the charging voltage is 4.3. The minimum discharge voltage remains the same at 2.75.
So these can be charged at a, to a higher voltage. However, in my testing of these cells, I've noticed that uh, oftentimes cells that have uh, were, specif were specified with a higher charge voltage tended to have lost their capacity uh, at a higher percentage than the other cells. So I still don't recommend you regularly charge cells like this to 4.3 volts. So for these calculations, we'll stay with the typical lithium ion battery voltages of a maximum 4.2 and minimum 2.75. So if we begin with the 12 volt UPS, and we start with using three cells in series, if we multiply that by the minimum voltage of uh, 2.75 volts, we obtain a minimum voltage of 8.25 volts, which is safely below the 9.7 volts the UBS sees. Now, if we take the 4.2 volts for the max and we multiply that by 3, we end up with 12.6 volts. Now, here's where the problem is. The UPS will reach 3.64 volts, which is quite a bit higher than the maximum voltage these cells can uh, obtain. So obviously, if we can see here that this will not work. Now let's see if we do four cells in the series. So we do four cells in the series, and we multiply that by 2.75 for the minimum. We obtain 11 volts. And as you can see here, now this becomes the problem because the minimum voltage is 11 volts, whereas the UPS goes down to 9.70 volts. So again, here we have a problem. This will not work. We can continue the calculations anyways just to see the max. So if we multiply 4.2 times 4, we get 16.8 volts. So this would be okay because this is now above the maximum charge voltage. However, because of the lower voltage, uh, e either at 3 or at 4 cells in series, it just not, does not work with the UPS. Now, if we move on to the 24 volt UPS, so if we start with six cells in series and we multiply that by 2.75, we get 16.5 volts. So that's safely below the minimum voltage of the UPS. So this would be fine. Now, if we do 4.2 for the maximum volt times six, we get 25.2. Now, as you can see, this is a maximum that the cells can take, but the UPS goes all the way up to 27 volts. So this will not work. It's too high. <clears throat> now, if we try seven volt cells in series. So if we go with seven cells times 2.75, we get 19.25 volts, which is below 19.82, so that would be fine. Now, for the maximum, 4.2 times 7, we get 29.4. So that, that is higher than 27, therefore that would also work. So here we have a combination which could be safely used in this UPS. So seven cells in the series will get you a minimum voltage of 19.25 and a maximum of 29.4. So here we have a, a combination that works. Now let's move on to the 36 volt UPS. So if we go with nine cells in the series, times 2.75 again, we get 20, 4.75 for the minimum. So this is obviously lower than the 29.94, so we're good. Now we do 4.2 times 9 to get the maximum. We get 
7.8 volts, which is lower than the maximum the UPS sees. So here, again, this does not work. So let's try 10 cells in series. So 10 times 2.75, that's easy. So we get 27.5, which is safely below the 29.95 volts. Now if you 4.2 times 10, you get 42 volts. Now here, it's really close to the maximum voltage here. It's only 0.2 volts above. Now I, I did notice I, I put an asterisk here. The reason is that compared, although these UPSs, when they hit the maximum voltage, is pretty much remained at that maximum volts. Uh, this UPS only briefly saw 42.2 volts, but then uh, went down to uh, roughly 41 volts. So even though it did go up to 42.2, which is slightly above 42, uh, it only did it for a short period of time, and then it would settle. Also, if you, we go back to the spec sheets, you'll note that it says 42.2 plus or minus 0 0.05. So technically, these seem to be saying that it's safe to go up to 42.5 volts. And if it's 42.2, we divide that by 10. So they'd be all uh, charged at 42.2. So it'd be a little bit above. So I think this is also a feasible solution. Now, one thing we have to note is that for this one here, uh, the full charge voltage is obtained at 29.4. However, the UPS will stop charging at 27 volts or a little above. Now, what does that work out to? So 27.03, we divide that by seven cells. That means each cell will only see 3.86 volts in ma on the max. So that's quite far from being fully charged. Um, and actually, if we do the math, I think it's roughly 75%. So, although this would work, uh, you wouldn't be using the full cell capacity. If we look at this one, we get the same thing, but on the lower end. So, it's going to stop discharging at 29.95, which means the cells would stop discharging at 3, just below 3 volts. However, this is pretty much what most people recommend you uh, you stop charging at anyways. So I think at three volts, you're pretty much expired. The batteries are pretty much dead. So from these three battery combinations, I think the best solution or the best unit to use with lithium ion is the 36 volt UPS. Um, second best obviously would be the 24, 24 volt UPS. And obviously for the 12 volt, there is no possibility of running it with lithium ion. So I hope this helps you if you uh, plan on trying to run your UPS off of lithium ion batteries. Uh, I might in the future try to put it back together and test this out. So I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching.